Hey guys, Helen Hartsmith here again from the Heart of the Witches Path YouTube channel. Hope everybody's having a good day. I did. We're having some warm days, some cool days here in the autumn of mid-Michigan. And um, it's nice, but weird and sometimes hot, so eh, whatever. Neither here nor there. What am I doing in this video? Well, I thought that um, we've I've had a couple of watchers asking some questions about books, and I think that's kind of um, it's kind of a, a interesting thing about Wicca is that there's so many flavors out there, and there's really different books that will appear appeal to different people for different reasons. Wow, can I put different in a sentence anymore? Probably. But that's the great thing, especially if you're an eclectic witch. You can your learning potential is never going to be at an end because there's always going to be new information out there. There's always going to be new experiences that you specifically uh undertake as you do meditation, um, as you connect with your higher self, with that divine mind, and things like that. So I've been looking at my books a little more lately because of course I always kind of want to thin the herd a little bit because real estate is valuable in my tiny little house. And even though I have four decent sized bookshelves in my sacred space, I need more room. And so you know, anyhow, I'm looking at books. So, uh, this video, I thought that I would talk about traditional books. And as you can see, I have a couple of stacks here. So, I thought we'd talk about things and I'll see how far I get. And, you know, if we're getting too long, maybe I won't cover the whole stack and we'll go into a second video. But I also have notes. So bear with me as I kind of go through this. <clears throat> so what I did was I looked at the books that I had. And I was looking for specifically for books that deal with specific traditions. Things that I've studied, things that are a part of my daily practice, um, or my philosophy, my worldview, things like that. Uh, before I really get started on the stacks, though, I thought there's one book that really comes to mind that unfortunately I don't own, but there are many out there who are involved in the Gardnerian tradition, and so I thought that I would at least mention, I always call it the Big Blue Book. But it's by Raymond Buckland, and it's it's I, I think if you're if you, if you're a witch or have been a student for a bit, then you might know what the Big Blue Book is. I don't even remember what, and I guess I should have looked it up beforehand. But the Big Blue Book by Raymond Buckland, that I believe Buckland was a Gardnerian, and so Gardnerian and Alexandrian, those are really kind of our our forefathers when it comes to the revival of the Wiccan movement that happened in the 60s and 70s. So definitely the Big Blue Book is a staple if you're interested in the Gardnerian um, tradition. So I thought I'd mention that first even though it's a book that I don't have because I was thinking about traditional books and of course that came to mind. So that being said, there's that. So what do I have? Well, let's just get it out of the way right now, folks, because I'm sure you're expecting it. Um, we all know I'm a student of Christopher Penzak's uh, Temple of Witchcraft, and so, of course, he has his uh, six-part textbook set that is his teachings, and or the, that are his textbooks for his classes. So this is the first book, The Inner Temple of Witchcraft, and of course I have all of them. I also have Mystic Foundation, which is a book that I recommend to anyone who happens to be questioning, what is my path? what you know what am I what am I grooving on and I've talked about this book extensively in other videos so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into it now but let's just say if you're 
new to witchcraft, not sure what you're doing, check out this book because there's a lot of really good information, not only about witchcraft, but other faiths. So those are pretty good ones. Also from Christopher uh, is Foundations of the Temple. So if you are looking to become a member of the Temple of Witchcraft, this is a pretty cool book that has all of the specific temple um, like rituals uh, and, and prayers and, and larikas and, and different things like that. This is um, relatively new for me. Uh, the roomie got it for me for Yule and I haven't had a chance to totally go through it. But this is definitely, you know, it is the witchcraft tradition of love, will, and wisdom. So it's definitely a tradition book. So there, we've got Christopher out of the way. <laughs> the next book on the stack is, uh, this is the second degree textbook for witch school. Now, I happen to, this is part of the Corellian nativist tradition, and I have some notes here to share about that. So the, uh, the Corellian tradition was started by Orphes Carolyn High Corral in the late 1800s and the tradition like Christopher's is very eclectic when it comes to witchcraft it kind of looks at a lot of different traditions and um, it's also known as universalist as well so I happen to hold a first degree with the Corellian nativist tradition and witch school is the the name of their online school which is where I took classes through and I'm, I'm actually technically still taking classes through because I am working on my second degree and so these books are they def they have all of the lessons and uh, which is kind of neat because when I first started witch school and they're still on there but all the lessons are on the website but it's kind of nice to have this particular um, to have books, to have, you know, a hard copy that you can, um, that you can make marks in and, and highlight and different things like that. And the Corellian tradition is actually pretty interesting. Uh, it had some really great ideas for me when I was at the point that I was at when I started taking them. So there were, there were ide the ideas on witchcraft and stuff like that were very like, oh, eye-opening and, and neat and energy work and, you know, different things like that. So when I'm finished with my uh, Temple of Witchcraft degrees, I will probably go back and finish these just because I happen to have a lifetime membership with Witch School so I can take as many classes as I, as I want to and go back whenever. So this is uh, this is definitely an interesting uh, tradition and an interesting tradition book to check out. You might want to start with the first degree rather than the second one, however. So next on the stack is a book on shamanism. Now there are literally tons of shaman books that are out there and I mean you can look at it from a Native American perspective you can look at it from a Slavic perspective you can look at shamanism from an African perspective even but this happens to be a book that I've seen recommended by many different people and so this is The Way of the Shaman by Michael Harner and this is a pretty interesting book it's older um, and I, as you can tell, I can I found it used. I happened to find it used at my, it was like a Barnes and Noble or something like that. Um, I was looking to see if I could find a copyright date quickly. This is a 1990, it looks like, copyright. And there are drumming CDs to use for, uh, for shamanic journeying purposes that Michael Harner put out and so yeah this is um this is just a really great you know start off point I mean if you're gonna start somewhere start sound and and start here and and work your way from there this is a good one I guess I should say that if anybody wants like a more in-depth uh, review of the book then let me know and I can make a separate video about that 
you know, and, and that way I'm not doing a bunch of, I'm not going too deep into things here. The next book that I have is Wiccan Warrior by Kerr Cahoulin. Now, this I think is interesting if you happen to be someone who is into like a martial art, for instance, and you're intrigued by, you know, a pagan path as well, uh, you might find this book interesting. Um, Kerkahulan has been to Convocation quite a few times. He is actually a retired police officer. He lives in Canada, and I've talked about him in other videos at different times and such. Um, it's an interesting book because it brings that warrior perspective into Wiccan, Wicca, which you can probably get from the title, right? Oh, can't imagine why. So this is Walking a Spiritual Path in a Sometimes Hostile World. And so Care has actually started his own, you know, tradition. And I, unfortunately, I don't remember. It's, it's a Celtic word that I would probably kill if I tried to say it. But I know that Crystal studied under care and their rit ritual garb is actually a gi, which is what you would wear for um, like judo or um, karate and things like that. So if you're, if that is appealing to you, then you definitely might be interested in care's writing. So definitely something to check out if that's what's bread, buttering your bread, melting your butter, whatever. So Good grief. Sorry, guys. The puns are bad today. Um, so the next tradition that I have some books on is actually the fairy tradition. And the first book that I have is Evolutionary Witchcraft by T. Thorne Coyle. I actually met her at Convocation. It feels like years ago. Um, she's a pretty cool soul. She was actually a student of the founder of the fairy tradition, which is Victor and Cora Anderson. And let's see, did I have any other notes about that here? Um, so the fairy tradition is all about the natural wild forces that, uh, that are a part of our, the world around us and specifically how they interact magically. So um, I read this book a long time ago and I've been wanting to go through it again just to kind of, you know, come back to some of its ideas and things like that and I just haven't had time but I do remember that it was a good book it was a good read and then the other book is a new book that I haven't had a chance to read Betwixt and Between by Storm Fairy Wolf now I picked this up at Convocation last year and Storm is also part of the fairy tradition and um, so he's a, a an initiate of that tradition and so he's also, he holds the black wand of a master and is the founder of Blue Rose, a school and lineage of the fairy tradition. So I took a class with Storm and I really enjoyed it. And so this is definitely a book that's on my list to read. Um, and if you're intrigued in the fairy tradition, then this might be something, both of these might be books that you're interested in checking out. So this is a little bit older perspective, The Tea Thorn Coil, and then Storms is a, is a newer book. So definitely some things to look at if you're interested in the fairy tradition. Okay, next on the list is Dianic tradition books. I am fairly certain that I have mentioned in the past that Kathy and I, we studied for a year and a day with a Dianic group here in our area. And that's actually how we met uh, Cornflower Wolf and how she came to be in our circle. We were all students of that particular session. So these are some books that are from the Dianic tradition. Now the Dianic tradition is actual, was actually founded by Susanna Budapest or Z Budapest. And so these are two of her books which is the holy book of women's mysteries um part one and part two now these are are older books but i'm sure 
I'm trying to recall where I found these. I did not buy these new, so I must have found them in either secondhand stores or in the used section of, you know, a Barnes & Noble or something like that. I don't think I found them on Amazon, but you can definitely check there. These are some really core writings with rituals and things like that that are all part of the Dianic tradition. Now, Z is also on the back of this Vaunt Part 1. It um, says that she, let's see, she's the founding mother of the contemporary women's spirituality movement and the first to coin the term feminist spirituality. So, definitely Z Budapest, anything from her is going to be Dianic in nature, feminine in nature, so if that <coughs> is something that appeals to you, the Dianic tradition deals with the female only. It doesn't, it doesn't say that the male half doesn't exist or the male gods don't exist, but as a tradition, they only work with female deities, Diana in particular. So Z Budapest, her writings are definitely going to be Dianic in nature. Now, also, this is one of the books that uh, was required reading for us during our year and a day. So this is Women's Rights, Women's Mysteries, Creating Ritual in the Dianic Wiccan Tradition by Ruth Barrett. Now, Ruth Barrett is a super awesome woman. Um, I'm pretty excited because... Um, Ruth and her partner have actually recently moved back to this area, so I'm hoping to kind of connect with them because we were able to meet them when we were studying with our year and a day. And so she's a, a really talented woman. She's a musician. Uh, obviously, she's a writer. She's a priestess. And um, she... Yeah, Original Goddess Songs. Her music is really pretty. So this is another great book if you're interested in the Dianic tradition and want to learn more. There you have it. <laughs> and let's see, let's look at time. We're about 16, 17 minutes, so let's just keep going. We'll try to finish up quickly. So the next, uh, the next books in my stack actually have to do with gay witchcraft. So if you happen to be... Uh, gay and wondering how um, how that works for you in witchcraft and things like that, then I would suggest there's other books out there, but I would definitely suggest these two. Gay Witchcraft by Christopher Penzak literally changed the game for me when it comes to my sexuality and my Wiccan practice. And so like his other books, it's got great historical stuff. It's got great uh, exercises in it. You can see all the all the little bookmarks and things like that that I've put into this. It's a great book and I highly recommend it. Of course, this is coming from a male perspective. It's got a male slant on some things because Christopher's a guy, but you know, you can it, it works for chicks too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is probably the best gay witchcraft book that I own and I own quite a few so there is that one and then Christopher suggests picking up this book which is witchcraft and the gay counterculture by Arthur Evans now this particular book uh, I know that I bought this new and this is still available but this book I had to um <laughs> it's by fag rag books that just makes my heart happy. I had to order this. Again, this was a used book. I had to order it off Amazon as a used book. It's, ooh, 1978. Is that right? Yeah. This is a 1978 copyright, but there, guys, this is a great book. If you can lay your hands on it, grab it. It's It's got some really great information in there, historical stuff. stuff. Chapter 8 is Sex Magic in the Early Third World. I mean, there is, there is some really great historical information in here that is worthwhile. And, and honestly, if you want to be a, a well-rounded priest or priestess, then this might be something that would be interesting for you just to be able to speak to, you know, if you're not LGBT, to be able to speak to someone who comes to you seeking advice. So definitely something to look at. 
we got through the stack and I think we're under 20 minutes if I wrap this up quickly so thanks for watching uh, this video and if you liked it or learned something from it please give it a thumbs up if you if you like this type of video let me know I'm really like I said early on in the video really trying to look at some book information and and try to give you guys book information based on what I've read so you know take that for what it's worth I definitely haven't read every Wicca book or even every pagan book that's out there I can only share with you my experiences with the books that I own and the books that I've read so there you have it if you haven't done so already please subscribe to the channel we love to have you come back and see what's going on here um, if you comment below are there traditional books that I know there's some that I missed but what did I miss let me know um, let me know if there's something that you think I would like based on what I already have I'm always looking for suggestions too so I and I like to hear from you guys so comment below or you can drop an email at uh, heart of the witches path at yahoo.com and be, be sure to check out the Instagram account heart of the witches path what is it at like Instagram or something like that whatever it is check <laughs> check me out over there so thanks for watching and thanks for walking the path for a little while with me until next time blessed be